You had to kill a treble to, to make a windscreen for your microphone. Yes. That's terrible. That's cruelty to intergalactic animals. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's such a beautiful place. So, you're an artist? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I just do stuff, you know, and some of it is more like art and some of it's more like uh, weird technology. I don't know. Maybe I'm a mad scientist with a... Uh, <laughs> with an art problem or an artist with a mad science problem, <laughs> I don't know. One of those two. But yeah, you got great light today. Yeah. Anyway, here's a, I'll give you a brief look into my... This is the nerve center. Power center. Oh. Solar panels put on your house, you watch. This is the ham radio? That yeah, well ham and here's the power center for all the solar panels and the wind generator. KI6RRX. Kilo, India Sex, Romeo, Romeo X ray. So, this radio, it allows you to get in touch with people that are very far away? Oh, yeah, theoretically anywhere in the world on some of the bands, depending on the propagation. So, anyway, this is oh. kitchen and living room. And this whole place is my big project. Mm -hmm the whole thing uh, it's an experimental habitable artwork in progress you build everything yourself right yeah actually this all this room was built out of uh, scrap lumber some of which was donated and a lot of the items were found right nearby in uh, huge piles of junk when i first moved out here i wanted to build something huge and ridiculous and surreal in the desert so knowing that there was some inexpensive land available in uh, southern arizona i took a trip to douglas by the time I got there, it occurred to me that uh, I didn't have any money. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know how I thought I was going to finance uh, the purchase of land. Luckily on the way, I happened to come through this place here and I realized, well, I could do it for free here. That fits my budget. <laughs> so that's how, that's how that came to be. This is beautiful. I saw a photo of it on your blog. I'm very proud of that. It takes a lot of time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was my first art car. Lived in it for a couple of years. Some of that time with a, a big dog. It lights up at night. You gonna be around later after dark? Yeah, I was thinking about staying one more day here because I liked it very much. You got a number of guest rooms you're welcome to use if you like. I can just put up my tent somewhere here. If I... Yeah, you, you don't need to though. I mean, there's a there's a guest room right there, that little trailer and. The bus is, uh, has got some really nice uh, beds in it too. Such a great place to live, man. This is just fantastic. Well, not all the neighbors are very nice, but the rent is really good. <laughs> yeah. If it were any cheaper, somebody would come out and hand me money at the beginning of every day. Man, this is great. How many how many years did it take you to, to build everything? Well, um, I've only been here three years. This bus came in October. A group of uh, people had been traveling around the United States in it. It, it used to be a New York City metro bus. Yeah. They uh, pulled all the seats out, converted it to veg oil, and uh, went on a two-year trip yeah. uh, all over all over the U.S. and Alaska. When it died uh, nearby, they, they wanted to bury it in Slab City someplace. I'd never met them before. Yeah. And they came and said, hey, can we bury our bus in your backyard? I'm like, okay. So after they came, we started work on the tower out here. This has been Halloween weekend. We built the foundation and the first two levels. So it's just a big collaborative, uh, collaborative piece. 
next weekend there's going to be another big party and we're going to get it uh, much further along I hope and I'm going to start lighting it up. Yeah. The other sculptures are kind of just little one-offs. Most of them were, are made from the materials that were, you know, all over the place here. All the garbage, in other words. Everything here you see is made out of trash. Philo, whatever, everything he does, he's protecting it from the environment and you're kind of leaving it to the environment, right? It's, uh, the environment out here is pretty harsh. And it's, uh, it's very expensive to, uh, to protect the stuff. So I've, I've learned about, you know, which materials uh, will survive well. The sun is the biggest enemy. Most plastics are no good. You know, wood, mild steel, you know, most metals are good to work with. And since all this was out here anyway, this is just my way of dealing with uh, as a, my effort of cleaning up, I guess. And I love these, uh, you know, a lot of people bring beds out here and they just leave them. And it doesn't take too long for the sun to completely eat away all the fabric and the material. So these are just the, the skeletons of mattresses and box springs. And they, they're actually quite strong. I have a lot of new solar panels that need to be installed, yeah. and the larger a uh, collecting basin I can have for that energy that's coming from the sun, the better. Yeah. Come on yeah. through. These will be enough to run several air conditioners 24 hours a day for about a week. Whoa. This is an awful lot of batteries. Whoa. Assuming there's like a nuclear yeah. winter and there's no yeah. sun. I have generators too, but I prefer yeah. to just use the, the solar. I'm not sure that I can do that. Well, a lot of us are sure until that moment, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you, I was really pulling your leg about the cherry pie. You know, I wasn't me being serious. La la la, la la la, la la la. Well, I'm glad to hear you talk this way You know I watch you writing every day Something in me yearns to win Such a cold and lonesome heroine And who are you? She sternly spoke To the is a seed of transformation. The seed of transformation? Yeah, I, uh, I picked up the bus. I'd had a couple of Volkswagen buses before. When I moved out to California, I was uh, working as an entry-level software developer for a robotics company in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And um, wanting to explore the area. Get out as often as I could. Trips, I came out to uh, city. But, uh, but um, started decorating the inside of it, like uh, old bars that time forgot. You know, I had to create an atmosphere in a very tiny space, and I took it to. But, um, little things happened in that little tiny space inside there, and this happened quite a bit. And at other um, party camping events, couples who were having multi communicating, yeah, you know, uh, would go inside and they would just start opening up to each other. 
couples who had split up um, get back together, but they healed their, you know, what they had in common. They uh, walked out with a re renewed sense of respect and love for one another. Uh, I think it saved a couple of marriages. From the, you know, what conversations that would go on for six hours, yeah. everybody would forget the next day. Uh, somehow probably retain some some fragment of those of those conversations and uh, carry them with them back into the real world. One would hope, you know, because if you, it's of no value to travel if you don't remember yes. what happened. I think it's in its permanent home, the, the bus. I've pulled the engine. Uh, I'm a, uh, but it was my home when I first moved out here, so it was like I moved back into it for that, that uh, uh, perhaps my final transition. One never knows. I'm not saying the book is closed on me moving anywhere else ever, but uh, there's a fair chance at least that this will be the last place I live. This uh, this project, this this journey, has has really reached a, the kind of scale where it's uh, it's hard to imagine what comes next.